No, Hello. I don't. I don't do. My name's Trina. If you don't know that, you're probably in the wrong room. I, th I, th I think they're all here for you. Okay, cool. Okay. Wonderful. Wonderful. Well, thank you guys for coming. I really appreciate it very much. Uh, my name is Trina Nishimura, um, and I love your cosplay. The cosplay here is sick. You guys look amazing. Amazing. So how's it going? It's good. Good. Welcome back to our show. Even though it's a little show, it's not. Yeah, I, this is the first year for Roseville, right? Yeah, this is this is the first. You are an inaugural guest. Wow, that's amazing. <laughs> you have to share the title with Jeremy, though. But I mean, sh if I'm going to share with anybody, like I, it's an honor to share it with Jeremy. Yeah. Jeremy, sharing it with Jeremy. That's a tongue twister. Say that ten times fast. Sharing with Jeremy. 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 Jeremy. Ah, uh, <laughs> got up to I was eight. So close. So close. Now what we gotta now do? we gotta recut it and do it again. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. yeah. That's what editors are for. <laughs> Audio engineers. Um, so this is a Q and A panel. Yeah. Whatever you want. You want to talk? We'll get questions from the folks. Fantastic. This yeah. this lovely lady right up front already has a question. Oh. Can we take her question? Of course we can. Awesome. Uh, so the question is, if I, Trina Nishimura, was to meet a character that I voiced uh, in My Hero Academia, Jiro, uh, how would that interaction go? Um, I feel like because she's so punk rock, I don't know if that's still a thing. I'm kind of old now. Uh, <laughs> punk Thank, rock's still a that. thing, right? Like, yeah. All right, great. It's still out there. It's still it's still. They're still thing. pumping out Ramones tunes. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> the other day I was, um, so I'm opening a restaurant with my uh, person, and it's really exciting and also exhausting. Uh, but I had, I was talking to some of the uh, people that work with us, uh, for us, and um, I was like, oh, yeah, you know, it's like on Cheers. And they were like, Cheers? What's <gasps> Cheers? And I was like, oh, it's a really, uh, it was a show about a bar and... Um, I rewatched it recently, and it is inappropriate. Oh yeah, it is not. It's <laughs> Cheers, like anything from that time frame. I mean, you want to watch a f show that's inappropriate? Watch, watch uh, All in the Family. Oh my I mean, gosh! Nineteen seventies, early eighties. I mean, there, there was no filter in those shows back then. I remember watching Cheers like vaguely as a child and being like, oh, they're all just friends. Da, 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 da. And I've like, since then, now it's like a, an anthropological thing that I'm like, I really need to watch the show and see what like stuff was programmed into me as a child so that like I can correct it. But like Diane is assaulted literally like every other yep. episode. Somebody's like trying to make out with her and she like pushes him off and like at one point this dude like like tries to make out with her in the back room and she fights him off and then she's like it was my fault it's like what what that's crazy it's awful not your fault ladies and gentlemen that is inappropriate yeah, it's not um, a term yeah. that really existed back then politically yeah. correct right or, yeah. um so now like when i'm like oh yeah she's so punk rock i'm like am i am i old like does that still exist i feel like it does like do you guys know who the ramones are or like no fx or couple couple All right, of okay, cool. there. <laughs> i'm not that old <laughs> i'm okay um green day before they sold out oh my gosh right. green day yeah i forgot <laughs> about them that's weird that i forgot about uh so if I was to meet Jiro as me, and she is her, um, I believe that she and I would probably talk a lot about music. Um, I also feel like she'd probably be pretty angsty and like teenager-esque, you know? Like, I mean, I was, I was an angsty teenager for sure. Who wasn't? <laughs> right? <laughs> I was angsty. Good for you. Own it. Um, so yeah, um, I think that it would probably be like a weird like, oh my gosh, like, do you really like this band? And she'd be like, yeah, I mean, doesn't everybody? And you know, like, cause she's just like, she's a music snob and she's also like really hardcore, but she doesn't really like, she's just not as like outgoing as a lot of characters are that I play. I guess I don't really play that many characters that are outgoing now that I think about it. Most of my characters are pretty sullen or like traumatized in some way um, or like really mean or kind of insane. So their <laughs> <laughs> directors are like, oh, a traumatized insane girl. Trina sounds great. <laughs> um, Pigeonholed as a voice actor. I mean, it's, it's, it's not, there are worse things to be. Yes. 
for sure. Um, so yeah, I think it'd be pretty, I think it'd take a minute. Like maybe we'd go out for like ice cream or something. Cause that's, that's my, that's my, um, ace in the hole, uh, is ice cream. Cause everybody likes ice cream. Um, my boyfriend's son is just turned 14. You want to talk about sullen. Whew. Teenage boys, man. I mean, teenage girls are harder, but teenage boys, the trick is ice cream. So I'd probably take her out for ice cream, and then we'd talk about music. It'd be pretty fun. Maybe we'd go to a punk rock show. Um, uh, maybe not. That's probably inappropriate for her age group. But um, yeah, so that's probably what I'd do. <laughs> Thank you for the question. That was a really good opening question. <laughs> Who else has a question? Yes. I mean, there's got to be questions. Questions. So speaking of a uh, insane traumatized girl, <laughs> <laughs> Diane from there, Cheers. Was there any pressure and anxiety when you uh, got the call? It's like, hey, you're going to voice a character from Evangelion. Yes. Was that was that rough? Like, could you talk about that? Sure. Bit? So Evangelion, for those of you that don't know, was a series that had a very long run. It's now on Netflix uh, yes. at the moment. Back in the '90s. Back in the Oof. '90s. Back in the old days. <laughs> Before some of you were even a sparkle in your father's eye or mother's. Um, so uh, in the 90s, there was a show called Evangelion. It was an anime, and the um, show ended abruptly um, because the creator had some health issues. And so the ending was rewritten, was written by uh, another person. So after the creator's health issues were resolved and he was better, uh, he came out of the hospital and um, decided to kind of do a reboot. So these four movies. Um, and there was a core group of kids that uh, were mech pilots um, and had to save the world. And only children could save the world by being these mech pilots. Um, and they added a new character in the second movie. There are four movies, uh, three of which are out right now. And the fourth, um, yeah. I know nothing about. So um, the uh, so she was there was an, another child added in the second movie, and it was terrifying. Um, over like 500 people auditioned for that role because it's a it was such a big deal um, to be able to um, have a new a new character in that show um, like people from the East Coast and the West Coast and Texas and all over um, and I honestly didn't think that I would be cast because so many people auditioned um, and the director Mike McFarland who is amazing and such a great human being uh, and I've worked with on several shows now um, he uh, I went in to audition and I was like oh yeah I'll go in I'll audition no big deal I assumed that I wouldn't get it and I was like oh well, at least you know I, I scheduled it so I could go and eat lunch with my friends afterwards so I was like at least I'll get some fun out of it it'll be fine um, and then I was cast and it was terrifying because um, there was such a large fan base and it's a new character and you don't want to let it's a very popular yeah. show and you don't want to let anybody down and so um, at the end of the day uh, you just have to trust the director and that they chose the right person and and uh, hope for the best and do your best like any job um, but it was terrifying. It was really terrifying. I may or may not have pooped myself. Who knows? <laughs> Who knows? I didn't. And I didn't. That's our oh. <laughs> <laughs> scene. Yeah. Yeah. No, Other no, questions? No. Yeah. Otherwise, I'll babble. I'm very good at babbling. Um, I do have two very popular questions that I'm frequently asked. Uh, by show of hands, who here would like to know how I got into voice acting? All right. By show of hands, who here would like to know how you can get into voice acting? <laughs> All right. OK. Because <laughs> why not, right? Um, so I got into voice acting because I was an actor as a child. Um, I started acting with my local community theater when I was nine years old, uh, or auditioning, rather. Um, and then I started touring professionally when I was 13. Um, I was raised by a single mother who had uh, has four children. And uh, I think really she was just like, take one. Just take one. <laughs> it's fine. Um, and then... Were you the middle child? Because I always sell the middle child. I, 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 well, there's, there's four of us. So oh. there's two in the middle. But the other one's the only boy. So I feel like I'm the middle child because oh. I just... It's also, I'm also the smallest, like somehow all of them are taller than I am. So like take this one, nobody will notice she's gone. Yeah, <laughs> no one will, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like you would think, yeah, but uh, so um, I've been an actor my whole life. Um, and then I did forensics in high school and I was in debate. Um, and um, yeah, so I've just been acting my whole life. Um, 
And then I uh, went to college and I was going to be a grown up um, and I was going to go to law school and I was going to have a 401k and a house and a white picket fence and a a uh, suburban and a labradoodle and all the things. And uh, after I graduated from university, I was like, I don't, I don't think I want to do that. Um, but a friend of mine when I was in college, uh, his name is Jimmy, and he knew I was an actor because uh, we grew up in the same hometown. Uh, he was like, hey, uh, do you, also I was broke, I was super broke, I had an internship um, at a literary magazine, and then I was working two jobs, and I was going to school, uh, and I was just super broke. And because uh, that's your job in college. I was really good at it. Um, and so my friend Jimmy was like, hey, Trina, do you want to audition for this really cool company called Funimation? Uh, we're doing these cartoon things, blah, blah, blah. I was like, no, Jimmy, I don't. I'm not going to be an actor anymore. I'm going to be a lawyer. I'm grown up. Gosh, gosh. And he's like, it pays. I was like, when is it? <laughs> And so I auditioned and they cast me. My very first show that I was ever in with Funimation or voice acting in general was um, Desert Punk. Um, I played the very small hungry girl. My first uh, session in the booth was me just eating a Tootsie Roll Pop the whole time, which was weird, a weird way to get in the business. Um, and then I just started doing more and more work uh, for Funimation and then for commercials and then for video games and then for apps. Um, and uh, after, uh, I was going to take a year off to write a book um, about stuff uh, after school and study for the LSATs. And so I was writing a little bit and I was working uh, several jobs and then I was also doing Funimation. I was like, I just really love acting. Like, I've always loved acting. Like, I don't want to study for the LSAT anymore. <laughs> and so I changed my mind. And so here I am uh, over a decade later. Um, so that's how I got into voice acting. How can you get into voice acting? Um, there is no one way to do it, right? If you ask any voice actor, everyone's going to have a different story. Uh, some people trained extensively. Some people went to college or university uh, or a trade school or an acting school. There are a million different avenues. Um, but my, if you want to be an actor, uh, here are my tips. Um, if you want to be an actor for a living, uh, sit yourself down and ask yourself a very serious question. And that question is, is there anything else in the world that I can do and be happy? Like any other job, because this is a very hard job and there's never a guarantee, which is not what you want to hear, but it's true. Um, it's a really hard thing to get into. And even if you are the most talented and you are like all of the things that you, know, you should be, uh, a lot of it has to do with luck, unfortunately. But if you've asked yourself that question, you're like, yeah, this is what I was born to do. This is all I want to do. Then nobody, uh, myself included, is ever going to be able to make to stop you. Um, two is get comfortable with the word no. The word no is your new best friend uh, because people will tell you no over and over and over again. Uh, well, in reality, if you audition and they say no, they don't actually call you and tell you no. <laughs> you just never hear from them. It's like a really bad Tinder date. Um, <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, I guess that's not a date. Um, I've never been on Tinder. I've always wanted to be on Tinder. I think it could be fun. Or like one of the other dating ones. Like, There's really creative profiles. Yeah, like yeah. I want to do the farmers only one. <laughs> Yeah, man, like how cool would it be to like go on a date with a farmer? It depends on where the date's at. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like what do farmers do for fun? Well, at night I got to go to dinner and then I got to go outside and I got to go feed the pigs and make sure. I mean, yeah. that'd be pretty cool though. And we're going to go to Dairy Queen. I love Dairy Queen. It's the Texas stop sign. It's a date. It's a date. <laughs> I would go on a date with one. Anyways, I'm sorry. Um, so... <laughs> <laughs> shiny things over there um, so if I uh, so get comfortable with the word no so uh, you'll hear the word no 99 times and that one yes out of a hundred will make the 99 worth it um, surround yourself with like-minded people uh, so surround yourself with lots and lots of people that are creative and whether they're artists uh, in whatever respect um, they, you'd be surprised how frequently you get a gig because somebody's like, oh, you need somebody that's like slightly, you have a character that screams a lot and is like traumatized and slightly off. I know this girl, Trina, <laughs> you know? 
um, you'd be surprised. Uh, so uh, like-minded people uh, train. So saying you want to be a voice actor for anime is like saying you want to be a baker, but all you want to make is blackberry pie. And that's great. It's just the problem is not everybody likes blackberry pie. And sometimes blackberries are out of season. So you need to be able to act in all realms. So don't say, I want to be a voice actor. Just say, you want to be an actor. And then um, allow yourself to train in those various different uh, areas. So like theater, or commercial work, or industrial work, or um, film work, or like all kinds of things. Uh, voiceovers, obviously. Um, and then. Uh, uh, train, um, oh, expose yourself to art, like all kinds of art, even the weird kinds. I dated this guy in college who used to like, I think he got it from the Big Lebowski, but he used to, he did, I'm sure he did. Uh, he, he was so cool though, and he was really cute. Um, he was not very bright, but very cute. Um, we call them cupids in Texas, cute. <laughs> anyway, so uh, he was real cute. He was I'm a cupid. That. He was a cupid. He was so cute. Um, but he was real weird, and he was an artist. And so I was like, "Oh my god, I'm in I'm in college. I'm gonna date an artist. Like I'm just that's just what I'm doing. It's fine." Because I'd already dated a lot of musicians, and that's the worst. Um, but <laughs> except for bass players, bass players and drummers. Uh, but that's not important. That's why. <laughs> that's why Pete Wentz was the famous one. Yes, true that. So. Um, Oh, yeah, he would, like, uh, I went to one of his shows, and he just played really loud metal music and then um, strapped himself up to this harness and poured paint on himself and, like, threw himself against a canvas over and over. What? We didn't date for very long. Uh, but it exposed me to different kinds of art, and so I got a different perspective of something that somebody else thought was really amazing and creative and neat. And so I was, it's just exposing yourself and being at places where you're like, oh, this isn't really for me, but good on you, man. Um, I also wonder if he's okay now. I mean, that, I'm sure that paint was toxic. Or the slamming himself repeatedly into a canvas. Yeah, yeah. like, and it wasn't just like like running and like he like um, had a propelling something. Some 20 years later, he's got cancer and brain damage. I mean, I hope not. <laughs> he was nice. Anyways, uh, so yes, expose yourself to creative people. Um, and uh, the last one would just be uh, believe in yourself. Um, because if that's really what you want to do, if you really want to be a voice actor, if you really want to be a performer for your career, then you just have to believe in yourself even when everybody else says no. And you'll be fine, hopefully. Hopefully. <laughs> I'm okay. Um, other que so those are my answers to the two most asked questions. Uh, does anyone else have a question? Or we can continue to talk about my past dating life. I don't know how we got there. <laughs> Uh, it, was, it was weird. Tinder. I think it was. Uh, I was going <coughs> to say, is there any uh, characters that you have voiced over your career that you either felt like a really uh, big connection to? Like, I really feel like this embodies me, or perhaps the opposite of that, which this one is like, this is very, like, starkly against who I am. Sure. Um, I like to think that I am not traumatized and dysfunctional, <laughs> uh, personally. <laughs> At least my therapist says I'm okay. Um, Therapy is great, uh, but um, yeah, so uh, a little, every character that I play, even like the little ones, you know, like there's always a part of me uh, that's acting, um, a, a part of me goes into them uh, and I relate in certain ways and I take, I, I frequently take uh, events or things that have happened to myself and uh, apply them into uh, another care into that character. Uh, Mikasa Ackerman from Attack on Titan, for example, right? Uh, Mikasa is clearly traumatized as she was, her parents were, spoilers, uh, her parents were um, killed in front of her and she was kidnapped um, and uh, sold into a trafficking situation, right? Um, and so that, I, I don't know what that's like. Uh, I'm very fortunate to know what that, to not know what that's like. Um, but if, you know, imagining what that would do to a person, right, to see that as a child and then uh, grow up in a, you know, post-apocalyptic-esque world where there isn't running water and, and where there's a, a hierarchy and, and class and economic uh, caste system and what that would do to a person. Um, <clears throat> It's, it's, it's taking those different aspects within the world and then applying what you know as a person, right? Like I was, I was a tomboy when I was a kid. Um, <clears throat> I hated dresses, hated them. Uh, I, I, 
I wasn't quiet by any stretch of the imagination, but um, if that had happened to me as a child, like what would that feel like, right? And what would that, how would I grow up and how would I internalize that and then become a person, a grown a teenager? Sorry. <clears throat> uh, so <coughs> I, I, I think you just take a little bit of yourself from every situation uh, and kind of go from there. Um, so, like, um, have you seen Steins Gate? Yay! <laughs> Thanks. Uh, so in Steins Gate, uh, there is uh, the character that I play um, has a lot of issues with her father, right? Um, and so my father and I aren't that close. And so I use that a lot in that. I mean, he's never tried to kill me, <laughs> so that's nice. That's always uh, a bonus. Yeah. Uh, but it's one of those things, you take things from your own life and then you apply it, right? So what would that be like if, if the person that's supposed to love you the most tries to kill you? Like, that'd be awful, right? Um, but the, what, what I do love about being cast as those traumatized and, and crazy characters is that frequently those shows have um, a deeper meaning and a lot of, uh, a lot of underlying themes, like Attack on Titan, if I may get on my soapbox. Um, uh, one of my favorite things about Attack on Titan is gender roles, right? Um, as we've all grown up uh, in different times, uh, gender roles have shifted. Um, but when I was growing up, um, girls had to be pretty, right? Girls are pretty and they don't talk and uh, they can be good fighters, uh, but if they're not well endowed wearing tiny little pasties of armor, then like they're not really important. Uh, and that bothered me, obviously, because I, I grew up in Texas where like pretty is blonde um, and pretty is white and I'm not uh, those things. Well, I am half white, but um, I think that being able to take a character like Mikasa and look at her and say like, this is what's happened to her and she's not the stereotypical woman and that's okay. And Attack on Titan being like, this is not, this is a strong female character that is the best fighter, I think is amazing. And conversely, it happens for men too, right? Like, you're not a good man unless you have a six pack and like giant arms and you can fight really well and, and you can't have emotions and you can't feel and you can't think. Thinking's for the girls, you know? Um, there's a character in Attack on Titan, Armin, who's, the, who's an awful fighter, but he's a great strategist and everybody really, and he's allowed to cry, which is really neat. Uh, I mean, he, he cries a lot, but he's allowed to cry. <laughs> Which is nice, you know? Um, and Mikasa isn't just chasing after Aaron because she, well, in this first season anyways, she's not just chasing after Aaron because she wants a boyfriend, you know? She's uh, trying to protect her family unit, uh, which I think is really beautiful. Uh, and similarly, there's a character with an Attack on Titan in that universe that isn't assigned a gender at all. And I think that that's a really interesting shift that we're seeing uh, because art does mirror life and it's okay and it's not taboo, whereas, in the 80s, in Cheers land, not the same thing, you know? Um, so that's a roundabout way of saying, uh, yes, I do, <laughs> I do relate to a lot of my characters, um, but the, not in the exact same way of the things that they've gone through, because I, I luckily have not been in those situations. Yeah, yeah, that's it. No boyfriend stories attached. What's your favorite character to voice? My favorite character to voice is all of them. Um, I, I, love, I love the fact that I get to go into a, a booth and just create something and make somebody. Um, I think it's, I'm, I'm super fortunate. Um, so I don't want to say like, <clears throat> this is my only favorite character because they've all been so special to me. And there is a lot of time and effort and work that goes into figuring out what their voice is and who they are as a person and what their motivations are. Um, so I just love them all. I know that sounds like a cop out, but I really do. <laughs> yes? Yes. Yes. What's your favorite role that's not from an anime? What's my favorite role that I've played that's not from an anime? Like a commercial you thought was funny or like anything, like favorite thing you've done is not anime? Um, well, let's see. Uh, my favorite thing that I've done that wasn't anime, um, I was a cheerleader 
once for a nationwide commercial, but nobody ever asked me to sign their insurance card. It's weird. <laughs> um, but like when I, was, when I was in high school, I was super angsty, and I was like, oh my god, cheerleaders are the worst. This is awful, because I was like, punk rock and hardcore. And then like for the audition, I was like, nationwide is on your side, like in it. <laughs> and so like, I feel like that was like my moment. Like, like if I had been in high school and been like that girl, ugh. Anyways, yeah, that was really fun to be that. Um, other fun things that I've been, favorite things that I've been. Um, oh, okay. So as I stated earlier, acting is not the most financially stable of jobs. And my agent called me and she was like, hey, listen, uh, I have this gig for you. And you're the perfect height and size for it. And I was like, oh, yeah, sure. What is it? She's like, it pays $80 an hour. And I was like, oh, my God, yes, whatever that is, I am in it. I'm down. And uh, she was like, you are going to be the road runner. Uh, so you guys know that me, me, the road runner. Uh, so there's a cable company in Texas. I don't know if it's here too, called Time Warner. Um, and so it's like this really cumbersome <laughs> outfit. Um, and there was another girl that was supposed to, like she and I were supposed to swap off. Uh, so I came, like dancer, like theater person in me was like, okay, this is going to be a giant mascot outfit. Like I'm not gonna wear makeup. I'm not gonna do my hair, like hair in a bun. Let's do this. And like sh this, the other girl that was my, almost exact doppelganger, uh, but Native American, like sh she was she was there with me and I was like, oh my gosh, this is gonna be great. But she came like full hair, full makeup, full outfit. And I was like, ah, oh, didn't get the memo. <laughs> and um, the guy, Brad, the guy, Brad was like, hey, we'll just call her Sarah. Hey, Sarah, how's it going? Uh, Trina, why don't you, why don't you start off in the, in the outfit? And so it's like these tights with like these giant foam rings all along the tights and then they put this body that's like this far out of like hard plastic that's like the body of the roadrunner and then on your shoulders is the neck of the roadrunner so that sticks up another like three feet um, so you're in this thing and then they have holes in the sides of the plastic body where you hang on to these little wing flapper things and so like you're like standing there like this and there's this giant heavy neck head thing on you and you're not allowed to talk and then Sarah was supposed to be my my guard right the person that's like okay you can take a picture with the roadrunner but whatever uh, just don't touch her or whatever uh, but Sarah and Brad were having this whole thing the whole time she never took a turn in that costume one uh, and there was this kid this and, and I love kids, kids are great. Um, but there was this kid who was like, you're not real, and like kicked me. And I was like, all right, that's fine. And I was like, meep, meep, to Sarah, like meep, meep, like trying to like flap my little wing thing. Um, and he was like, you're not real. And then he like charged me, and he like, he grabbed onto the wing, but like I only had it like that, and I like, and I'm trying to balance the head, and I was like, meep, meep. Me, me. <laughs> like, and Sarah and Brad are like, oh my God, yeah, we should do that. That sounds amazing. I was like, me, 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 me. <laughs> and so he like, I was like, okay. So my plan was to gently nudge him with the head <laughs> because maybe if like he saw, like maybe if he saw the screen on the neck and saw my face, he'd be like, oh, it's a person. I shouldn't do that to people. Um, and so he was like, meep, meep, or I was still screaming, meep, meep. And then like I bent down, and right as I bent down, he like grabbed the wing out of my hand, and so like my hand's free. And then like I tapped, I tapped him. I barely tapped him. And then the head came off, and then like I have like one hand out, and the head's like on the floor, and I guess I knocked him over or something. And then like there's some other kids crying, and it was, that was one of my favorites though. <laughs> Yeah, that was pretty good. Meep, meep, indeed. I, I, I still got paid, so that's that's nice. That's like a great job. Thank you. I thought I did pretty good too. It was Sarah, uh, but yeah. So that was one of my favorite jobs ever. It's pretty funny now. At the time, not, not funny. as funny. Oddly, they didn't ask me back. Well, they got a violent roadrunner. I mean, it wasn't kind of violent. I was just trying to. Time Warner under investigation. This <laughs> roadrunner beats up small child. Well, I didn't beat him up. <laughs> No, <laughs> I'd be awful at Disneyland. <laughs> I would, I would, uh, yeah, not my, not my cup of tea. Other questions? Yes. Um, 
what is your personal favorite scene that you did as Jiro from My Hero Academia? My personal favorite scene that I did as Jiro in My Hero Academia, without any spoilers, um, I would have to say in the movie, when <laughs> in the movie there's a time where the the ladies all get together and they get to like put on a different outfit and I liked I really liked that part because I was like oh my gosh you have a different outfit like I mean no no offense like she wears super cool clothes like she's like super punk rock and like it'd be the best cosplay ever because it's just pants and boots and a shirt that's a little bit torn <coughs> see she's like I know um but uh, yeah, I, it was cool to be able to have her be in a different outfit. It's like, oh, she's a person. <laughs> so that's nice. That's nice. Other questions? Yes. Uh, so this is a Steins Gate question. Steins Gate. Yeah, so, um, so the original Steins Gate, of course, came out, I don't know, 2010, 12, mm -hmm. or so on years ago, and then mm -hmm. Steins Gate Zero came out. Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering, because was, that was a decent like, gap between those, and right. playing your character, I'm wondering what you did like to kind of like remember and like, I guess, train yourself for the role of um, Makase. Yeah, uh, so the question is, uh, how did I come back to the role of Makase after a large gap in between season one and season two? Steins Gate Zero, right. Um, so there was a movie in between, um, which was really hard. Uh, so in Steins Gate, I play a traumatized girl. Um, <laughs> But in Steins Gate, uh, the first series was really, really hard. And without any spoilers, um, she is a very intelligent teenager who, cr uh, who um, creates or helps to create a time traveling machine, a time machine. Um, and uh, when you mess with time, uh, every movie ever, <laughs> <laughs> right? Hijinks ensue. Um, but hers are kind of traumatic oddly um, so it was a very emotional uh, a very emotional role that involved a lot of uh, dark places um, but mostly it, uh, like I during the m it was harder to get back to Makase from uh, Steins Gate to the movie than it was for zero because in the movie I had 95 percent of the lines um, so I it was easier to immerse myself in her world, uh, but it was certainly more emotionally traumatizing for me as a, as a person. Um, and I know Tatum, who plays the other lead in Steins Gate, had the same experience. It's, it, was, it was a really hard thing for both of us. Uh, Tatum, after the first series, went into therapy uh, because he was so immersed in it and it was so hard on him. Um, and my, as far as for the movie, um, it, if you go into a, a sound booth for four hours out of a day and you're constantly uh, crying and just sobbing and, and everything, um, usually in between takes, you get like a 30 to 60 second uh, break to be like, oh, not real, not being chased by giant people trying to eat me. That's not real. I'm here. Um, but with Steins Gate, because, uh, because it was so emotional, it would, be, it would have been harder and taken longer to get back to the mental and uh, physical place that I was in crying and stuff. Um, so I just stayed in it. So it was just like four hours of like traumatizing myself. But when you do that, um, your body doesn't know that you're like your brain knows that you're safe and you're fine, uh, but your body's like still producing those chemicals and, and things. So you're, it's like when you get out of the booth. Um, but uh, I got through it because I would come home and my boyfriend would be like, you did that girl today. And I would be like, you're the worst. He's like, it's not real. Here's a pizza. <laughs> so <laughs> the pizza helped and tacos. Um, but yeah, so... Uh, being able after spending i think it took about three months to record the movie um so it was super easy to jump back into her for zero uh also she's yeah <laughs> i'm like spoiler yeah she's a bit different in zero so it was easier to like be like oh all of those traumatic things happened but this is her before those traumatic things happened so she's a little bit like calmer and like not as like pfft. so that was nice that was really nice um that was cool so it was just, it was easy to jump back into her because she hadn't gone through so much in zero. Does that make sense? I, it might not, too, if you haven't seen the shows. <laughs> um, but there's a lot of jumping, time, time travel, hijinks. Yeah. Yeah. 
Other questions, comments, quips, quiddities, quibbles, concerns? Not Attack on Titan. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> I know, right? Uh, I, I want to say my hero, because that'd be super cool to have a quirk. I would love to have a quirk or a superpower and like be Jiro and be like, my parents are rock stars and I'm destined to be a rock star and I can play any instrument and I have excellent taste in music. Like, I think I have excellent taste in music, but then if you ask some of my friends, they're like, hmm. You made some poor choices, like back in the aughts, you know. I liked Sarah McLaughlin. There, I said it. Um, but uh, those poor dogs. Um, <laughs> I mean, you can't hear that song and not think about those poor dogs. Oh, I love dogs. Anyways, I'm sorry. Yes, uh, if I was going to live in any universe, um, uh, it wouldn't be Steins Gate because then, um, yeah, my hero academia for sure. Because no one dies, you know? I, shh, shh, no spoilers. <laughs> um, yeah. Wh who, which, which universe would you want to live in? Um, like, out of yours, or does that have any? Any. Blue Exorcist. Blue Exorcist, yeah. Mm. Yeah. Because they're like, you're not actually in, in danger, right? Well, okay. <laughs> I like how you guys are like, just like, well, <laughs> well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i'm sorry i'm just talking no what? go talk you know. this is for you well We're yeah they're here for you not and for you, me you have a nice tie oh well thank you yeah man it's so unfortunately bumblebee's in the wrong place and he's the optimus prime <laughs> i'll just tie it differently next time <laughs> womp, womp. <laughs> i know uh oh. yes how long does it take you to voice an entire say 26 uh, it varies. So depending on what character you're cast in, depending upon um, how many lines they have, things like that. For example, my best friend Brina Palencia, who voices uh, Ray in uh, Ava, um, she had maybe like, she worked maybe like an hour for the entire movie. Because it's just like, Because oh. Ray never says anything. It's anything. just all bumps. She's just <laughs> like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah, so it really just depends on the character, um, and it depends on how many lines they have. It also depends on the director, et cetera. Ad nauseum. Other questions? Okay. Yes? If, if you were in the My Hero um, universe, and if you did have a quirk, what do you think that would be? Um, and I could pick any quirk ever? Yeah. My quirk would be that I always insert the USB port the right way. <laughs> always. First try. Yeah, first try. I stole that from somebody, I think. Yeah, I think. Yeah. You're like, yeah, you did. I know. I uh, think, I think, who said that? I think, it was either, I think it was either Mark or Chris Sabat said that. Oh, was it Chris? Yeah, I think it was Chris Sabat. Yeah. Oh. But it's a good one. And then, and, oh, yeah, because Monica Real said, do you want to be able to shape shift into Chris Sabat? Something along those lines, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Oh, no, yeah. No, it was Ian. Oh. Was it? Yeah. Oh, okay. And I think I said oh. I wanted to be Chris Sabat, because who doesn't want to be Sabat? Uh, I would, Vegeta, I would, that's yeah, my favorite. Right? Like, I would want to be Sabat. Hi, I'm... That's awful. <laughs> Hi, I'm Christopher Sabat. <laughs> like, no, that's not very good. That's not very good at all. Um, my quirk, my quirk, my quirk. Uh, I would want to... It would be really cool to have, like, healing powers. Like I could heal anybody and heal myself. Yeah. Yeah. And not heal people. Like, sorry, uh, Putin, you're going to die. Like, <laughs> like you, you get sick, I'm not healing you. Like, that'd be a cool thing. Like, oh, evil dictators around the world. Don't get to be healed. That'd be nice. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be my... That'd be my quirk. Everybody actually already has quirks. There's little things that everybody has every day that happen in real life all the time. Like, my quirk, I get to the restaurant before the line does. <gasps> if the line's already there, it doesn't work. But if I get to the restaurant and there's no line, like 12 people show up behind me. It's awesome. What are you doing tonight? Uh, I, <laughs> I want to go somewhere and be <laughs> like, ah, I don't have to wait. Hit the green light at just the right time. Or That's so nice. Yeah. That's a good quirk. Um, other questions? Uh, this gentleman. I have a challenge. A challenge? A cha oh. oh. Are you 
Am I willing to wear a red scarf anywhere at all times, like Mika said? No. I live in Texas. It is 108 degrees there today, and it feels like 125. What's the humidity today? I don't know. Mm. Awful? Yeah. It's, it's just always hot. I yeah. can't wear a red scarf. 96 degrees, 95% humidity. It's like being waterboarded. I mean, it's, it's yeah. like breathing Ugh. liquid. It's, it's not good. Yeah, I heard uh, you guys had 106 dry heat. I heard that it was been really bad, though. No, if I... Oh, I'm sorry. No, if I could wear any like outfit forever and like it'd be socially acceptable to wear that same outfit every day, I'd wear a onesie. You know the onesies that are like, uh, what are they called? C yes, I would. I have several. Well, I got one uh, because of a baby shower that was the theme, and I was like, oh, this is infantile. Like, why am I? And then I put it on, and it was amazing. <laughs> It's like you don't have to like suck in or stand a certain way or do anything like weird. It's like, yeah, I'm a giant otter. What? <laughs> like, it's and like they're like little flaps if your hands are cold, and there's a hood. I'm in it. Like it's it's kind of like I now own four. It's there, I said it. And like in the winter, it's amazing though. I really love it. At one point, my I talk about him a lot today for some reason but my boyfriend was like hey let's go to dinner I was like can I wear my otter he was like I mean yeah <laughs> like, I was like awesome and then he was like so you want to just get takeout or do you want to like go somewhere I was like yeah man I'm in it I have like it has a little shell in the otter like in the pocket I was like let me get my shell and like I like ran to get yeah that's what I wear every sit day. there at dinner it was so <laughs> I loved it so much. <laughs> I have a Goody Tama one. Oh, I love it so much. I, I made all of my, my siblings uh, at Christmas this year. I made everybody put one on. My, like, so it was really awesome. It was really awesome. My little sister has a unicorn one. Yeah, so that's not what you asked, but that's what I'd wear. <laughs> Other questions? I had one way at the back there, the blue ears. Um, I have pieces from all of my characters because I love cosplay. I just feel like if I'm going to do it, like I have to do it like 100%. <clears throat> but most of what Jiro wears, I already own um, because I like to think that I'm still punk rock. Um, uh, but <clears throat> I'd probably want to do Jiro, but I, wanna, I would want to make the earphones, like the ear jacks, like do stuff. You know, like I've seen some really amazing cosplayers that are like, oh, check this out. And they like plug in the earphone and it plays music. Because uh, they have like a little iPod, the nanos um, in the wig. Those are really cool. And so I was like, oh, I have all of the pieces that I need for Jiro. And then I was like, oh, I'm failing at life. Um, so I'd want to cosplay Jiro. But I mean, like, look at your cosplay. You look amazing. That's awesome. And your sword. Where's your sword? Do you have your sword? You have to show everybody. <clears throat> I mean, look at that. That's amazing. Like, I want to bring my A game, you know, sports, A games. I don't know anything about sports. So um, go sports team. Go sports. Yeah. Yes? Uh, what Hogwarts house am I in? What Hogwarts house am I in? I mean, every, like, I feel like that's a trap, one. Because everyone's like, if you're like, oh, blah, 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 they're like, I'm not in that house. Um, and I also don't know, like, I want to say Gryffindor, but they're the worst and the best at the same time, you know? <laughs> But, like, what does Hufflepuff do? <laughs> All right, by show of hands, who's a Gryffindor? Eh. All right, by show of hands, Hufflepuff? All right, noted. Hufflepuff, all the way. All right, <laughs> ding, ding. Uh, Slytherin? <laughs> oh, really? Oh, my gosh, my brain is totally farting. Ravenclaw. Let's, thank you. Ravenclaw, anybody? All right. Oh, you guys are Ravenclaw? That's awesome. I this think you're right about Gryffindor. It's like, hey, let's go put all these kids in, like, danger. And in then danger. let them figure it out. Yeah, right? Like, <laughs> right? It's awful. Did you know that the guy from Twilight was in that? Yeah, Robert Pattinson. Yeah. He was Cedric Diggory. Yeah. He was, was from Hufflepuff. Have you guys seen all of the, all of the um, Harry Potter stuff? Have you read the books? The books are good. The books are really Surprisingly good. Surprisingly entertaining. These two adorable twins up at the front are my second cousins. 
I think that's what it would be. This is my cousin, Elena. She's amazing and came to support me and brought her two adorable children who are awesome. Um, other questions? Other questions? Quips? Do you have any favorite lines or quotes from any of the characters? <clears throat> Do I have any favorite lines or quotes from any of my characters? Uh, yes. And I feel like when people ask that question, they're really saying, do the thing, <laughs> <laughs> which I can do. Um, do the thing. <clears throat> do it, do it, do it. Um, okay, so do you have any favorite, is there a character that you would like me to say? Oh, okay. oh it's all right. Uh, do you like Attack on Titan? Uh, that's cool, me too. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, all right, so uh, Mikasa at some point, at one point in season one, uh, she's trying to rally the troops and she's like really upset because she thinks that her friend Aaron has died and she's like freaking out and about to like go and fight people. So she, <clears throat> she sounds like this. Um, <clears throat> I can do it. I'm strong, real strong. None of you come close. I am a warrior. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. Did the thing. Uh, I did the thing. Uh, other questions? No, yes? Yes. With the advent of simul dubbing, how has your workflow changed? Uh, with, so simul dubbing means uh, back in the day, uh, we used to record the entire season and then it'd be released uh, either via Cartoon Network or uh, straight to DVD, depending on the property. And now with simul dubbing, um, the episode comes out in Japan and literally hours later, uh, it comes out in America. Um, and so it means that uh, your uh, it's, it's definitely different in that you're not recording multiple episodes all at once. It's also a bit challenging because the director may or may not know exactly, depending upon the property. Um, sometimes they don't want to tell the, the Japanese companies don't necessarily want to tell uh, even us like what's happening or what's coming up or what happens to a character. So you are always committed to going on the journey with that character as it, as it happens, which I prefer, uh, but some, some people don't. Um, so you're, uh, you're at the studio more, but for shorter amounts of time. So it's a little bit more challenging to like find time to do anything. Like you can't be like, I'm going to leave town for a week. It's like, oh, you're going to lose your job. Um, so that's, that's a bit challenging, but, um, all in all, it's, it's, it's just, it's definitely like, instead of being at the studio for, you know, like a week or two to finish up a whole series, it's just every week. It's like a few hours. So that's, that's the biggest difference I find. But it's not bad. I mean, it's not bad. There are worse things. In, there are so many more things in life that are worse. <laughs> like famine, genocide, <laughs> body dysmorphia. <laughs> um, lots of other things. Uh, other, yeah. Mm -hmm. My most memorable or entertaining recording session happened at the old building at Funimation. Uh, so back in the day, uh, over a decade ago, we were at this older building and we all had whisper booths instead of recording rooms. So a whisper booth is basically a phone booth that has uh, egg cart insulation, egg crate insulation uh, inside of it with a microphone and a uh, television on the outside when televisions used to be cubes um, and then you'd have a mic stand uh, with paper instead of a computer because computers were expensive uh, these are all things that happened um, and it was uh, kind of a budget sort of studio situation so the air conditioning wasn't always great and like I said I live in Texas um, so it was in the middle of summer um, and it was very very hot outside and um, we would, I would have to do a take, open the door, um, turn on an oscillating fan, and like let the, the booth air out for a minute, and then close the door, and then do the line. So it, it was taking a really long time, and I was like, guys, let's just power through this. Uh, so I put my uh, hoodie over the tiny window to cover it, and um, may or may not have removed some clothing, and I was like, just don't come in here, let's just keep going. And uh, then I heard like, no, no, no. And then like this dude was like, hey, Trina. And I was like, what's wrong with you? He's like, what's wrong with you? And I was like, ah, it was awful. <laughs> it was, but it was really hot in my defense. And I was also in my early 20s and an idiot. <laughs> so <laughs> that's your job in your early 20s. Yes. I was good at that too. Yes. Mm -hmm. So with the height of like all of these shows from the 90s, like Bruce Baskets, yes. before that, like Raymond, being like either <clears throat> up, 
is there anything necessarily that needs to be done? Or is there a work that you'd like to be revisited? Cowboy Bebop. <laughs> Cowboy Bebop all day. My older brother watched anime when we were kids, and he was like, oh my gosh, Trina, you should totally check this out. It's really cool. I was like, you're an idiot, because I was angsty. Um, and then later in life, like once I was in college, this dude that I thought was really cute was like, oh, I really like uh, I really like anime. I really like Cowboy Bebop. So I was like, me too. Love it. All the time. Cowboy Bebop for life. <laughs> what is Cowboy? Um, <laughs> and at that point, I went to uh, these... Some of you are too young to remember this, but there were these shrines uh, that used to be built uh, for entertainment purposes called Blockbuster. <laughs> you might have caught a glimpse of it in the Captain Marvel movie. Right? <laughs> yeah. Blockbuster, yeah. Planet Block Hollywood. Right? So I went to Blockbuster and rented Cowboy Bebop, and I was like, oh my gosh, my brother was right all these years. I can never tell him. Um, but yeah, Cowboy Bebop all day. I loved Cowboy Bebop. It was awesome. Awesome. Yeah, I think. Is it time? We might have time for one more. If someone's got another off. question that one we can go more through. Question. So, you know, going off of that, what does your brother and your family think of like you doing all these anime roles now? Um, at first, it was like I was like, "Oh my God, Seth, I'm in this, I'm in this anime." He's like, "No, you're not." <laughs> and I was like, "No, I am. I swear, I swear, I am." Um, <clears throat> and now, like when my like my mom is really into it. She's like, oh, this is, like, I've, I'm very fortunate. Like, I've been able to, I think the best part about uh, this is that I w I've been able to take my mom some places for conventions. I took her to Australia, and, and so that was really cool. Um, but <clears throat> now, like, my mom will watch, or she'll DVR. She'll have my little sister come over once a week <laughs> to, 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 to program her DVR um, <clears throat> so that she can watch uh, shows that I'm in, like on, on Toonami and stuff. Um, but she really just does it so that she can wait till the credits come up, and then she'll pause it and then use her phone to take a picture <laughs> of my name and send it to me and be like, Trina, you are in this. I was like, I, I'm the one that told you. I was. Um, <clears throat> but she's great. She, but she also doesn't know who I am in the show, she'll be like, that's you. I'm like, that's Bryce Pappenbrook. <laughs> You've met him. You spent two weeks with him in Australia. With, uh, all right. And she's like, that's definitely you. I'm like, that's Josh. <laughs> she's like, you do little boys. And I was like, yeah, I mean, I, I do, but that's not, uh, okay. And then she'll be like, I'm pretty sure that's you. I'm like, that's an old lady. <laughs> I told you, the red scarf. Um, <clears throat> They think it's pretty cool. It's it's definitely weird now um, that people uh, know who I am and like when when people wear like a an Attack on Titan shirt or whatever. Um, my little sister has learned that you don't talk about it because at first she was like, "Oh, that's my sister," and people are like, "Ma," it's like, "No, dude." Like, I want to be able to wear my otter outfit to your work and like drop off your lunch like don't tell people because <laughs> uh, then it's like oh yeah yeah let's do take a picture let me get my shell um, <laughs> bringing it back uh, so yeah uh, it's great I'm, I'm very fortunate to have a really amazing family unit um, they're all very supportive and they're awesome obviously uh, so I'm very fortunate in that aspect and they they're just supportive people which is awesome other questions? Are we done? Good. Are I we think, done? I think we're at the uh, the end of our time there. Yeah. Yeah. So thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you. Big round of applause for Trina. Hey, Trina. Right on. And you